Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to show you the quickest and easiest way to build a job board inside of Webflow. Let's get right into it. All right guys, so there's gonna be a lot of meat on the bone today, hopefully a lot of value provided today. So let's not waste any time. Let me hop in and show you what kind of job board we're going to be building, and then we'll go through our nine steps to get there. Hopefully we can get it all built in less than 25 minutes. All right, let's go. All right, so here's the job board we are going to be building today. As you can see, we have just kind of our homepage here with all of our jobs listed. Um, and we have search functionality here, so you can search for certain roles, or you can search for certain locations, or you can filter based on like different, um, you know, job industries or, or role types right here. So as you can see, we're just kind of filtering like that. All right, so that's our main page, kind of basic. I'm not worried about design in this video. I'm gonna just show you how to build out the infrastructure and get it up and running for you, and then you can make it all pretty on your own. Um, and then we have a second page, which is just our submit a job page. And this is where potential employers can come if they have an open role and submit a position to then populate back onto our job board site like this. All right, guys, so that's what we're gonna be building today. Now we're gonna try and do this in nine simple steps. It's gonna be a lot, but I think we can do it together. So without further ado, let's get into step number one. All right, so the first step we wanna do is we wanna clone a job board template from somewhere so we don't have to build this manually. Now you could build it manually if you wanted, but for our video, I'm gonna use a clonable. So I am using the JetBoost job board clonable. I'll have this linked down in the description below so that you can copy the same. Um, but I have tweaked it slightly for our purposes. Um, if you clone this specific template, you'll see that there are three filter buttons here that I have removed. Um, I have also gone into all of our CMS collections here in our job board, and I've removed any custom HTML embeds. So I think there's three of them. If you just look through, they're normally like right here by these text blocks. I've just deleted those because their filtering and sorting wasn't working. So delete all custom code HTML embeds, I got rid of these buttons. And then the last thing that you should do if you do use this clonable is come into project settings and just delete the custom code that JetBoost included in the head of our website. So just make sure that this is empty, hit save, and then we're good to go. So that's all just a long way of saying that after we clone, we want two main things on our website. We want this form block at the top that has our, our different filter fields and search fields. And then we want our CMS job collection down here like this. All right, so that's step number one. Now, step number two is we wanna make sure that our CMS collections are set up. So we're gonna come into CMS and if you do clone this project, you will have these CMS collections already set up for you, which is very nice. So the first thing that we wanna do when setting up these CMS collections is we wanna to come to our two CMS collections right here that are kind of our category CMS collections. So we have one called job roles and job types. So job roles, you can see it's basically just the different types of work you will be doing at the job. So we have nine of them here, finance, H&R, customer success, et cetera, et cetera. So you wanna set those up. If you copy this clonable, these will already be included and you can just change the names as you need for whatever purpose that you're doing. So if you don't wanna have customer success, you wanna have, you know, whatever, uh, marketing, change it to that. Um, and delete and add as you need here. So that's our job role CMS collection. And then here we have our job types contractor, part-time, full-time. You can delete this out if you want. You don't have to include this. You can add different CMS fields for other different categories that you wanna track. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with the JetBoost ones of job roles and job types. That's step number two. Now, step number three is we wanna set up our jobs CMS collection. Now, this is going to be our list of all open positions. So we have this one right here called jobs. And you can see, here's a list of all of our open positions. Um, and these are the ones that show up right here on our page. So this is our CMS collection, our final CMS collection that we want to show. So let me go in here and just show you how we have this set up. Again, if you clone this, this will already all be set up for you. But you can see we have the name of the position. We have a description of what the position is. We have a company name. We have a logo, which for our video, we're not gonna worry about, but it is there if you want it. Um, location, company website, URL. And then very importantly, we have these single reference fields that are linking to our job roles and our job types CMS collections that we just set up in step number two. So you can see when we come here to type, we can either pick contractor, full-time or part-time, or for role, we have all nine different roles that we can choose from, all right? So that is how we set that up there. 
Very important that you link those single reference fields, which again, if you clone the JetBoost clonable, which will be linked below, these will be linked for you already. Okay, so that's how we set up the front end in Webflow. Now we need to set up the back end. How are we gonna automate all this? How are we gonna add different positions to our CMS collections automatically? Well, we're gonna do it through a combination of using Airtable and Zapier. So let's hop into Airtable. Let me show you what we need to do. All right, so now we're in Airtable. If you haven't used Airtable before, it's basically like Excel or Google Sheets. It's just a giant database that we can use and link different things to each other and automate different things. It's very cool, it's very intuitive. Let me show you what we need to do. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a couple kind of administrative tables. Now, what are these tables doing? So you can see that I have a job role lookup table and a job type lookup table. Now, now what are these? So as you can see, I have all of our job roles here. These are the nine that we were just talking about over here in our job role CMS collection, all right? So I've just listed all of them here, finance, H&R, customer success, etc. cetera, all right? Now this is very important and I will tell you why later. It'll make more sense then. But what we need to do is we need to go to Webflow and for each of these different roles, we need to find what the unique Webflow ID is. Again, I will explain all of this later. For now, just follow my steps. So for example, finance, we're going to name it finance because we have a finance field here. All right, we're going to click into finance in Webflow and we have this item ID right here. We're going to copy this and paste it right here into our unique ID column. And we're gonna do that for all nine different job roles. All right, so again, you just go right back here h and r and you grab the new id customer success you grab that id and you just paste it to the corresponding role now we want to do the same thing for job type so we come here we have all three of our job types we come back into webflow and we just grab those unique ids from our job type collection and paste them in to the corresponding job type right here all right now those are the first two tables we need to set up. We need to set up two more. The first one is going to be kind of our overall live open position database. This is going to have all of our open positions that we want listed on our Webflow CMS collection page in spreadsheet form so we can add and edit and delete and things like that. So you wanna make a new table. I'm calling mine jobs live. And then we want to set up our columns to correspond to all of our different fields in our jobs CMS collection page. So remember, if we come in here, we have a name field, we have a description field, we have a company name field, we have a location, a website, we have our type and our role. So we want to have all of those correspond to columns in our Airtable table. All right, so as you can see, I'll show you how I have mine set up. I have company name, job title, job location, job roles, we will come back to this in a second. We have our unique item ID, which we will talk about as well. Scrolling to the right, we have job type, our job type lookup ID, which again, I'll show you what to do in a second, our job description and our company website. All right, so those are all the fields we have. Now let's circle back here. Let me show you how you wanna set up your job role and job type columns. Most of these are just text columns. You can just come in here, you can type in whatever you want. But for our job roles and our job type column, we want to create linked fields so that we can reference this unique item ID that we set up in the previous step. So what do we do? Well, you wanna just come in here to your column header and you want to choose this link to another record option. That'll be your field type. And then you can just link right to our job role lookup table, all right? So that when we add a new record, as you can see right here, let's just add a new one. We can come in here and we can just grab the different options we want. So I can just, okay, this is gonna be a customer success role. All right, so you wanna set that up like that. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to add this unique item ID field. This is what we call a lookup field. Now, what this is doing is essentially it's looking up this role, customer success, and it's bringing back that unique ID from that job role lookup table. So it's looking, all right, let's find customer success, and then let's just bring in that corresponding ID. And this all happens automatically. So you can see, if I delete this, if I change it to H&R admin, 
that unique identifier just changed. All right, again, I'll show you why we're having to do this when we get to our Zapier step. But you wanna do the exact same thing for the job type. So you wanna create that linked field right there, but this time to your job type table. All right, that way we can come in here and just choose a full-time, part-time, or contractor. And then you wanna create that lookup field, but this time to the job type lookup, and it's the same logic. It's gonna look up full-time and then bring back that unique Webflow ID, all right? And then again, we have job description and company website out there. So that's how we wanna set up our jobs live table. Now we wanna set up one more table and I'll show you why. So if we come back here, you can see that on our submit a job page, essentially we have a form here that lets future employers with open positions submit jobs that can then be added to our CMS collection. So what we wanna do in Airtable is we wanna create a separate table called job submitted. And this is just going to be the, the table that stores all of our form submission jobs. Now, why are we setting it up like this? Well, I think for a good job board, if we're setting up our structure like this, when an employer submits a new role, I don't want it to automatically go live on my website. I want it to be kind of in a list for me to review, like a holding list. And until I review everything, make sure everything looks good, I don't want it to be live on my site. So. Essentially what we wanna do here is we wanna create the exact same table as our jobs live, so we can just basically copy it over, create a new table called jobs submitted or whatever you wanna call it. We have the exact same fields as before, all the way down to company website, job description, our lookup fields, our linked fields, etc. The only difference is I've added a new column here, selection field type, and all it is is, you know, do we want to send this job live or not yet? All right, so if I review everything and I'm like, okay, we wanna put this job on our website, perfect. I'm gonna hit go live, and then we're about to set up an automation so that when we select go live, it automatically will populate in our go live table, all right? So that's why we're doing that. Now, let me show you how to set up this automation. So step five is we need to set up this automation. So how do we do this? Well, it's very simple. We're gonna come into automations, just like this. We're gonna set up a trigger. In our case, we want to trigger on when a record matches a certain condition. The condition being that toggle, go live or not yet. All right, so when a, when a record matches a condition, our table is going to be our submitted table, the one that's pulling in all of our form submissions. All right, so we're just gonna choose that. And the condition is when that go live field is go live. Right, so you can see our two options here, but when it's go live, that's our trigger. So when it's go live, we want to add an action here. In our case, we wanna create a record in jobs live, in our jobs live table. So when we trigger that we want it to go, then it'll create a new record in our jobs live. So we'll come in here, create a record in our jobs live, and then we're just gonna map our fields here. So company name in jobs live, we wanna to map to company name in jobs submitted, job title, job roles, all the way down like that, all right? And then when that's all set up, we can save it. We turn it on here and then I'll show you how it works. So for example, let's just come in here and we'll, we'll do a fake one. So whatever, fake here, fake, fake, I'll choose an option here that automatically populates. I'll choose an option here that unique ID populates. Fake, and then we'll just copy in the URL. All right, so let me show you this. When we go to Jobs Live, you can see it's not here, okay. But the second we toggle, since we set up that automation, the second I review this, I go, oh, that's a good job. I wanna include that on our live site. I'm gonna choose Go Live. Boom, 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 it automates. And then we come over here and you can see it just added a new line to our table. So the automation is good to go. We have our little review uh, trough here that we can review new jobs submitted. And that's all good to go. Now, step number six is we need to embed this form onto our website. So we wanna come to job submitted table, and then you wanna come down to form 
and add a new form. All right, you can give it a title, you can give it a description, and you can see that we have all of our different fields here that correspond to all of our different columns, which correspond again to all of our different CMS collection fields. So everything's talking to each other. You can see we just have a form here and I'm gonna hit share form, embed this form on my site. I'm gonna just hit auto size height, just, just in case. It's a nice little feature. We'll toggle that on. And then I'm gonna just copy this. Boom, boom. Come into Webflow. And then I'm going to, I have an HTML embed here. And I'm just going to open the code editor and paste this in. All right. And then save and close. So now when we, when we publish our site and go live, we have this nice form submission right here on our website. Okay, so in our next step, we need to link our Airtable database to our Webflow CMS collection automatically. That way when our jobs are ready to be posted, we don't have to do anything manually. So we're going to use Zapier to do this and it's pretty simple. Now that we have all of our fields set up, it's kind of just plug and shut. So let's go into Zapier. Let me show you what we need to do. All right, so we wanna create a new Zap. I'll show you the one that I have built. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a trigger. So for us, our trigger is going to be Airtable and it's going to be our event new record. All right, so whenever a new record is made or a new line is added to Airtable, we want to add that new line to our Webflow CMS collection. So new record, we'll hit continue. Uh, so you wanna link your Airtable account, hit continue. And then you wanna choose the base, which is our Webflow job board in Airtable. And then you wanna choose the actual table. So you can see we have, here's our four tables that we just set up. We wanna do the live one. So when a new record is added to our live table, that's our trigger. All right, we can leave this and this the same. We'll hit continue. All right, you wanna test the trigger and it'll bring in a new test uh, sample. Should look something like this. You can see we have our company name, our title, our location. Um, you can see we have our job roles and there's our unique ID for our job role and our job type. Very important and this is why we had to do this. I'll show you this in a second. Company website and description. So it's all looking good, we'll hit continue. So now we create our action and our action is we want to add this new record in Airtable to our CMS collection list in Webflow. So again, we're gonna choose Webflow and we're gonna hit create a live item. So this will create a live item on our published site. So you wanna choose that. We'll hit continue, link your Webflow account and then choose the site that you want. Um, so for this one, my site in Webflow is called this. Very, very cute. Um, our collection, you can see we have all of our collections here. Um, so our job roles, our job types. In this case, we wanna add the record to our jobs collection. And now we just map our fields. So our, our description in Webflow is going to map to our description in Airtable down here. Our location is in Webflow is going to map to our location field in Airtable right here. And we just map our fields like this. Our job title will be our name, et cetera, et cetera. Now, very importantly, we need to talk about the type and the role. Now, this is why we had to set up those separate databases with those unique identifiers and create those linked and lookup fields back in Airtable. This is why we had to set these fields up right here. Because when we map through Zapier from Airtable to Webflow, when we're doing single reference fields, which you remember, are these little drop down options we have every time we set up a new CMS um, item right here. Th these are what we call single reference fields. When we set those up and we wanna map them through Zapier, Webflow doesn't recognize these names. They will recognize those unique identifiers though. So that's why we had to set up those lookup fields. Okay, so when we come back into Zapier here and we're choosing job type, you might be tempted to come down here and choose our job type field, which has this kind of weird string of, of numbers and letters. I think, there's, I think there's numbers in there. But you don't wanna choose that one. You want to choose our job type lookup ID and include this string here, this alphanumeric string, which is our unique ID. So that's the one you wanna choose for job type lookup. And that's the same exact one you wanna choose for job role lookup. So you wanna come in here, 
and choose the job role lookup ID right here. All right, so just be careful with that. Now, once we do that, false, false for archived and draft, you'll hit continue and then you can test your trigger. And when you test it and everything is good to go, it will send an item to Webflow. And when it does that in Webflow, you automatically get a new item added to your jobs CMS collection. All right, so our Zapier is set up now. We're almost there, guys. Hang in there with me. I wanna do one last thing. I wanna set up this sorting and filtering functionality that is crucial for any good job board. So remember, we have a form here and our CMS collection here. That's all we have on this page, essentially. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go into FinSuite and they have some really, really great filtering and sorting attributes that we can add. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to come here. I'll have this link down below. Uh, we're gonna copy this script and we're gonna put it into the head of our page, our job board page, settings, and then come down here and just paste that script into our head tag section here. All right, hit save. And then you're good to go there. Now, we need to add in a couple different attributes here and map our fields again. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna come right here to list and we need to add an attribute to our collection list. So we'll just copy this name and this value, come back into Webflow. We'll come down to our jobs list, CMS collection. We'll come down on the right to custom attributes. And you just wanna, you just wanna paste this in right here. So what we just grabbed from FinSuite, so CMS element filter right there. And then our list value right here, we wanna just paste in there. All right, so we just add an attribute. Secondly, we need to come and grab our filter attribute. And we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we need to put it into our form block with all of our fields and dropdowns. So copy our attribute here. We'll come back to our form uh, block right here, just our form. And you want to add the custom attribute here. So paste FS CMS filter element and then filter value. All right, so now we have attributes on our form in our CMS collection. Now we just need to link them with our last type of attribute. So we come back here. And the last thing we need to do is step number three, this field identifier. Now it's very simple, I'll show you how to do it, but it's kind of the same thing. So we wanna copy our name of our attribute. And then for each field, we wanna link it. So in this case, this search text field here, we want to add our FS CMS filter field name and then we can give it any value we want, but you have to remember the name. So in our case, I'm just gonna do a name. Now, what do we wanna search for here? Well, we wanna search for the name of the position. So if I come down to our CMS collection and I choose our name of our position, this monkey position, well, I just wanna add the exact same attribute here, the exact same one that I just added to our text field. So FS CMS filter field, name. Same thing for location. But this time we gave it a name or a value of location. And then we come down here to our CMS collection and we do the exact same thing. We give it a name and then we give it the value of location so that these two are talking to each other and these two are talking to each other. And that's how you do it. You do the same thing for this drop down here. Now we have filter and sort functionality on our site. That was our final step. Now it's the fun part. Let's test our workflow, make sure everything is working and talking to each other. So let's come to our form on our website. And we will post a job here. So we're an employer and let's just say uh, Air Force pilot, San Diego, uh, you know, whatever, other marketing, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, full time, job description, fly airplanes, company name, Top Gun. Uh, and we'll add a website here. Okay, and then we will submit it. All right, so remember when we submit our form, it shows up in our Airtable job submitted table. So we can see it right here, Top Gun Air Force Pilot. Perfect. It should not already be in our live table. Let's make sure that's working. Okay, it's not there yet. Perfect. Now, since we set up that automation and we review this and it all looks good, let's, let's go live. Let's send this to our site. So we'll hit go live. The automation that we set up kicks in. And it should now show up on our live database right here. So perfect. All right. Now remember our Zapier trigger runs every time we create a new record. 
Um, on the free plane with Zapier, it will check our airbase table every 15 minutes, but we can refresh it manually. So let's go make sure that's looking good. Okay, so we'll come into Zapier here. We'll just manually run our zap. Again, this happens every 15 minutes automatically, but just to show you that it's working, we'll run it manually. So we'll just hit run. Uh, looking for new records, good. Got a check mark, so that should be good. And then when we come back to our site, when we go to our job board, we should have that Air Force pilot job show up automatically, and there it is, perfect. All right, so sweet, so that workflow is working. And then let's just make sure that our search fields are working, perfect. Air Force pilot shows up right there. Um, location, circus, perfect. San Diego, perfect. And then let's make sure that our role filter is working as well. Design, nice, other, nice, perfect. So that's it guys. We just made a simple job board inside of Webflow by linking Airtable to Webflow via Zapier. So anyways guys, I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. I know it was kind of technical and I know we got into the weeds there, but I think it could be helpful for you guys if you are setting up your own job boards. So if you like this video, go down and smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. If you wanna see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing, that'd be awesome. If you have any questions about anything we did today, get down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you all for being here, guys. I'll see you on next week's video. Peace.